Long, long time ago, when the postal system was modernized, the chronically overworked postmaster general overlooked two tiny post offices, one tucked away in the rolling hills of Somewhere, the other somewhere in London. After unsuccessfully awaiting modernization, these two offices continued with their quiet lives until one day their daily routine was violently disrupted by the letters of Lady Susan, the most accomplished coquette in England. To avoid another scandal on social media, Lady Susan had now taken to letter writing and her letters were eagerly expected by the two post offices through which all of these letters coincidentally passed. What with the secrecy of the letter no longer being what it used to be, Lady Susan's letters soon ceased to be private after all. I will have you know that I'm reading this under protest. Duly noted. I don't know why you're so... I don't understand why you are so interested in these people anyway. But never mind. Patricia said I must read, so read I will. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. This is from Mrs. Johnson to Lady Susan. Edward Street. I am gratified by your reference, and this is my advice. That you come to town yourself, without loss of time, but that you leave Frederica behind. It would surely be much more to the purpose to get yourself well established by marrying Mr. de Courcy than to irritate him and the rest of his family by making her marry Sir James. You should think more of yourself and less of your daughter. She is not of a disposition to do you credit in the world and seems precisely in her proper place at Churchill with the Vernons. But you are fitted for society and it is shameful to have you exiled from it. Leave Frederica, therefore, to punish herself for the plague she has given you by indulging that romantic tender-heartedness which will always ensure her misery enough, and come to London as soon as you can. I have another reason for urging this. Mannering came to town last week and has contrived, in spite of Mr. Johnson, to make opportunities of seeing me. He is absolutely miserable about you and jealous to such a degree of de Courcy that it would be highly unadvisable for them to meet at present. And yet, if you do not allow him to see you here, I cannot answer for his not committing some great imprudence, such as going to Churchill, for instance, which would be dreadful. Besides, if you take my advice and resolve to marry de Courcy, it will be indispensably necessary to to you to get mannering out of the way and you only can and you only can have influence enough to send him back to his wife i still have another motive for your coming mr johnson leaves london next tuesday he is going for his health to health to bath where if the waters are favorable to his constitution and my wishes he will be laid up with the gout many weeks during his absence we shall be able to choose our own society and to have true enjoyment. I would ask you to Edward Street, but that once he forced from me a kind of promise never to invite you to my house. Nothing but my being in the utmost distress for money should have extorted it from me. I can get you, however, a nice drawing room apartment in Upper Seymour Street, and we may be, be always together there or here, for I consider my promise to Mr. Johnson as comprehending only, at least in his absence, you're not sleeping in the house. Poor Mannering gives me such histories of his wife's jealousy. Silly woman to expect constancy from so charming a man. But she always was silly. Intolerably so in marrying him at all. She, the heiress of a large fortune, and he without a shilling. One title I know she might have had besides baronets. Her folly in forming the connection was so great that, though Mr. Johnson was her guardian, I do, and I do not in general share his feelings, I can never forgive her. Adieu, yours ever, Alicia.
Why do you think she will really come to London now? Not be grand. And we have her letters here in our office. And what difference would that make? Pray tell. Well, um, no real difference. But wouldn't it be nifty? Yes, brilliant. Then we'd be the criminals reading other people's letters instead of delivering them. Now, wait a minute. What's that supposed to mean? And who just read the last letter? Pray tell. Mrs. Khan and Miss Clark said it's all right. It most certainly is not. Uh, Sandra or Patricia did say it was all right. Then she lied. Or um, was mistaken. We really should not continue this. But I have a letter that I was supposed to read to you. Should I just leave it? Don't be such a crybaby, Isabella. Miss Clark said to read it. So if there's trouble, it's her problem, not yours. But I don't want to cause any trouble. <clears throat> now, be sensible. After all these weeks now, who's going to know? Nothing will happen. And nobody will be in trouble if... Uh, Hey, we all keep quiet about this. So please go ahead, Isabella. It'll all be fine. I really don't think this is any yeah. good. Shush. Uh, okay, if you all agree. Um, well, this letter is from Mrs. Vernon to Lady de Courcy. <clears throat> Churchill, my dear mother, Reginald's long visit is about to be concluded at last, but I fear the separation takes place too late to do us any good. She's going to London to see her particular friend, Mrs. Johnson. It was at first her intention that Frederica should accompany her for the benefit of masters, but we, but we overruled her there. Frederica was wretched in the idea of going, and I could not bear to have her at the mercy of her mother. Not all the masters in London could compensate for the win of her comfort. I should have feared too for her health and for everything but her principles. There, I believe she is not to be injured by her mother or her mother's friends. But with, the, but with those friends, she must have mixed. A very bad set, I doubt not, or have been left in total solitude. And I can hardly tell which would have been worse for her. If she is with her mother, moreover, she must, alas, in all probability, be with Reginald, and that would be the greatest evil of all. Here we shall in time be in peace, and our regular employments, our books and conversations, with exercise the children and every domestic pleasure in my power to procure her, will, I trust, gradually overcome this youthful attachment. I should not have a doubt of it, were she slighted for any other woman in the world than her mother. How long, how long Lady Susan will be in town, or whether she returns here again, I know not. I could not be cordial in my invitation, but if she chooses to come, no want of cordiality, no want of cordiality on my part will keep her away. I could not help asking Reginald if he intended being in London this winter, as soon as I found her ladyship's steps would be bent thither, and though he professed himself quite undetermined, there was something in his look and voice as he spoke which contradicted his words. I have done with lamentation. I look upon the event as so far decided that I resign myself to it in despair. If he leaves you soon for London, everything will be concluded. Your affectionate, Catherine Vernon. Thanks, Isabella. Shame to see Reginald go. He caused quite some entertainment there. But maybe Lady Susan can now devote more time to her daughter, as she should. Yes, sure. That's the first thing she'll do. It is a miracle Frederica turned out to be a good person in spite of her mother. And yes, I am aware of what has happened, even though I'd rather not know. So, Lady Susan has really left us. Baller dash! She left them out of the house, not us! Marian left us to go back to town, though. Any thoughts on that, Isabella? 
Oh yes, Marianne returned this morning. She's considering transferring to Churchill now. Your village must be rather lovely to attempt her to move there. <laughs> yeah, sure. The village is very tempting. <laughs> That's nice. I hadn't heard. I'm happy for Marianne. All right, then. Let's conclude this, shall we? All right. See Bye. You.